and welcome once again to The Blueprints. This is Canada's conservative podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Schmail, Member of Parliament for Halliburton, Fourth Lakes Brock, with new content for you every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And with that new content, we are working hard to become Canada's number one conservative podcast. And unfortunately, we have a guest this week who's been so busy, we, we really had to try to lock him down. And with that guest, I'm going to introduce him in just one second. I need you to like, comment, subscribe, share this program. Help us push back against the ever-moving liberal agenda. If you can't listen or watch it right now, please download it. Listen to it later on on platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify. It is out there. And with no further delay, I bring in Michael Barrett, the busiest guy on the opposition benches these days. He's the member of parliament for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. He's also the, the shadow minister for ethics. So now you know why he's so busy. Welcome back, Michael Barrett. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me, Jamie. We have a lot to get to. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Let's start with Bill C-10. So Bill C-10, just for those joining us, catching up here, it's a bill that's the, the government plans to regulate programming distributed by media streaming services, something you might see on YouTube, on, on TikTok, or something like that. Basically, If the government deems it's big enough to be regulated, they will regulate that content, push down other types of content. It is a dog's breakfast. Michael, that happened in the middle of the night. It passed the House of Commons. Right. So this morning at 1.31 a.m., the Liberals forced a vote with the support of the NDP and the Bloc to pass uh, C-10. Now, C-10 is going to like you said, regulate social media content. And never has it been more important for Canadians to be able to access information online, whether it's on YouTube or uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and, and so on. And the government has decided that they're going to put their finger on the scale of what you are and aren't able to see and what you see more of. And, uh, that's being done as part of this Bill C-10. Now, when opposition members raised concerns about the, the prospect of, uh, you know, basically the, the government regulating the, the internet, regulating social media, the government took extraordinary steps to ram it through committee and then ultimately to force it through the house in the dead of night. And we know as conservatives that a free speech is, is critical. This is this is fundamental to you know to our our way of life, our freedom of speech and our freedom of expression. So we we believe in making sure that there's a level playing field, of course, between uh, large streaming services and uh, Canadian broadcasters, and and conservatives are always champions of Canadian arts and culture. But we cannot give the government any government the ability to regulate what you can and can't see in terms of uh, in terms of social media content and sharing. So um, this is something that this bill, uh, if it does happen to make it through the Senate uh, before there's an election, this is a bill that uh, a conservative government under Aaron O'Toole will repeal. We will uh, repeal this bill. But um, in the meantime, we're going to continue to um, we're going to continue to call on the government to uh, to put the brakes on this deeply flawed legislation and encourage uh, those in the in the Senate um, to to make the amendments to the bill that are necessary to perfect protect Canadians' freedom of expression. Now, many Canadians might not be aware that the Speaker of the House of Commons, Anthony Rhoda, basically slapped down the government for their actions in committee how the committee, through the help of the NDP, the Liberals, and the Bloc, pushed through about a half dozen to a dozen amendments uh, without being basically debated or discussed. They just rammed it through, and the Speaker actually came back and said, no, that, that's not acceptable. You cannot do that. So, again, another abuse of Parliament. Right, and we've seen this a couple times lately, uh, and it's a bit of a pattern for the Trudeau Liberals, and that's their disregard for Parliament. In this case, the uh, the amendments that were moved through the uh, the Heritage Committee were done so without the even the text of them being made public on an extremely tight timeline, reportedly even under the objections of the Liberal Chair of the committee. But it was a part of a, a programming maneuver by the Liberals to make sure that there wasn't debate and to make sure that 
uh, that this got back to the house and that it was rammed through at the 11th hour on, you know, actually at 1.30 in the morning. And, uh, and the speaker did, did um, claw back those amendments that were made at committee, but ultimately uh, with, the, with the help of the NDP and the bloc, uh, the Liberals were able to, um, to gain the system and, uh, and, and get some of those amendments back into this terribly flawed legislation uh, before it ultimately passed. Now, I've said it before, and I think it still remains true. When the government controls the content people watch and listen to, it, it potentially and very realistically takes us down a very dark and dangerous pass, path. When you have the government determining what they like, therefore it's what you should like, that's a problem. We should be going on the free market, allowing people to make their decisions on what they like is best. And, and it goes to even the music industry. If you think back 75 years ago, if the government controlled the music industry, told people what they were and weren't able to listen to, there are very there are a lot of genres of music that just wouldn't have happened, right? Like it, it never would have happened because some bureaucrat would have said, I don't like that, but I like this. So you're going to like it too. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's particularly concerning in the context of politics as well. And, uh, and I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to follow too far on your, um, on your analogy about music, because I'll find myself out of my depth uh, uh, pretty quickly. But uh, when we have a government who is embroiled in scandal, and whether it's the, whether it's the we scandal, the sexual misconduct in the military uh, scandal, uh, when we have a government that's defying multiple orders of, of parliament, uh, which is something that you know uh, we sh we can touch on in a minute, and when the government has the ability to control what you're able to see on social media, um, how are Canadians going to know what's happening in Ottawa? How would they know that the government has you know failed to implement uh, recommendations from 2015 that would that would help improve the the culture in the Canadian Armed Forces and help protect victims of sexual misconduct? How would Canadians know that? The special committee on Canada-China relations has raised serious questions about uh, about uh, firings of scientists at the National Microbiology Lab in in Winnipeg, and that their order for production of documents um, have been ordered by uh, that have been ordered by the House have been ignored by the government now multiple times, resulting most recently in the head of the Public Health Agency of, of Canada and 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 PHAC itself being found in contempt of Parliament, when we have, uh, when we have uh, just found out, as reported in the Globe and Mail, that Liberals have been using their office budgets to subsidize uh, the same companies that are or they're running their political operations. How would Canadians find that out if the government decides you're not able to see what the government doesn't like? And so, it's incredibly concerning anytime that uh, that free market of of ideas isn't open, and uh, and so. Uh, on C10, this is something that uh, that you know anyone who uh, who follows uh, who follows this program likely also follows a lot of our colleagues, Jamie, and sees their uh, sees their social media feeds, sees us talking about this a lot because it's it's critical to Canadians that we protect their their ability uh, to access uh, access the information that they want to see on uh, and share on social media. Two things you brought up and two things I want to talk about. So let's talk with your, your last point first. We'll talk about the uh, the news that was in the uh, Globe and Mail and kind of you mentioned it actually yesterday in question period, if memory serves, about uh, Liberal MPs using office budgets to pay for actual campaign research. And it looks like, according to the Globe and Mail article, 149 Liberal MPs or 97% of the caucus made payments uh out of their office budgets to a company founded by a very close friend of Justin Trudeau. Right. Uh, the story in the Globe and Mail details how um, how these companies, one run by Tom Pitfield, who's a, um, a childhood friend of Justin Trudeau and is married to the former president of the Liberal Party of Canada and, um, and, and Mr. Uh, Pitfield and uh, his spouse accompanied Justin Trudeau on the infamous trip to Billionaire Island, that first found him, that first saw him uh, being found guilty of breaking ethics laws, and uh, 
Not the last time he was found guilty of breaking <laughs> ethics laws, though. There's so and, many. You lose track. You really yeah, do. You, you, start, you start to lose track. And so in this case, we're seeing that uh, two, uh, two different software programs. One is called NGP Van. Uh, that's the company the Liberal Party uses to run their political database, Liberalist, as well as this data sciences company operated by Thomas Pitfield. And so um, what we're seeing here is they're using... 90, you know, 7% of nearly all of the, the Liberal caucus are, are using their office budgets to pay these, uh, to pay these um, Liberal insiders. And when asked about it, Jamie, it was pretty remarkable, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull it up here. Um, when asked about it, some of the Liberal MPs didn't even know uh, what they were paying for. So, um, uh, one yeah, of the Wayne Easter and John McKay, I believe. That's right. And, and John McKay, I'm going to read a quote from him here when asked what, what it was for. Quote, I haven't got a clue. I can't explain it. I vaguely recall once a year we write a check and it's always been explained that it's within the ethical guidelines. So we all kind of sign up for it and it goes into some oblivion. End quote. Taxpayer <laughs> money oblivion. Tax now, dollars at work. Your, your, your taxpayer dollars at work. So... Uh, First of all, I don't think that um, anyone should take ethical advice from uh, the Trudeau uh, cabinet or, or Justin Trudeau himself. And so when they're telling liberal MPs, nothing to see here, just sign a check and send it over. I guess, I guess we should be thankful that, it's, uh, that they're signing a check so it's traceable and it's not just brown paper bags full of money, but um, it's, it's incredibly concerning. And it certainly doesn't uh, avoid the appearance of a conflict of interest, but it does raise the question about what compliance, um, whether it, whether it's compliant with all of the applicable laws and legislation. Uh, to be um, to be generous in my in my assessment. But holy smokes, Michael! Like this whole pandemic, the liberals have been basically using the public treasury, the public purse, to enrich their friends and punish their enemies at the same time. We've seen this over. And over and over again, the We Charity with money going to companies owned by former Liberal MPs that actually haven't produced anything. And this and many others over and over again, the, 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 their insiders get rewarded. Everyone else on the outside stays on the outside. Well, that's absolutely right. It's uh, in, in, Ottawa, in Liberal Ottawa and Justin Trudeau's Ottawa, it's all, about, it's all about who you know and what your connections are to the PMO. And we've seen... You know, whether it's uh, whether it's um, the the spouses of uh, the insiders, the chief of staff to the prime minister and questions about lobbying. And it's always, you know, um, for her, first of all, the fact that they've been found guilty of breaking the rules so many times, I think, has has helped to train them on how to just stay inside the bounds. And which tells us that perhaps the rules aren't tough enough. Certainly the penalties aren't tough enough in Ottawa. And that's uh, and I think it's really eroding Canadians' confidence when Canadians are struggling to get by. Businesses have been closed because of lockdowns. Um, we have you know people are trying to do their very best, and meanwhile, and, and you know, uh, and money's not what it uh, you know money for a lot of households wasn't what it was uh, a year ago. And meanwhile, liberals connected to Justin Trudeau um, are are doing great at the taxpayer expense. They're getting the contracts. They're getting these sweetheart deals, and. It's um, it's it's really wearing on people's confidence in in politicians and their democratic institutions, and so we need to start dropping the hammer with with real real penalties, meaningful penalties for people who break um, ethical laws in Ottawa. And I forgot to mention, SNC Lavalin got a new contract during the, the the pandemic, so everyone gets money if you are connected. If you're well lawyered, well lobbied, you get the big government contracts. Everyone else, well, we can just push it uphill, I guess. I don't know what, what more we have to do here. But again, the, the ethics commissioner, you almost need rules to stop liberals from liberaling. That's, well, that's right. And, and our, our committee, the, uh, the ethics committee, did just release its report. And it detailed all of the different ways that we do need to tighten up the rules in Ottawa. And um, the refrain we've often heard from the liberals is that, well, these rules were put in place by a conservative government. Stephen Harper put these, put these rules in place. Well, um, Prime Minister Harper was trained as an, as an economist, and he couldn't have, um, and well, he 
masterfully steered us through the recovery from the 2008 recession. He couldn't have seen inside the uh, devious ethical, a uh, serial ethical law breaking mind of a future liberal prime minister. And so we didn't, we, we thought that, you know, conservatives in, in, in uh, the 2000s thought, here's a robust set of ethical rules that will make sure that any of the political players of the day will stay inside. We won't, we won't end up with another ad scam. Well, my goodness, you know, th this is, you can just picture uh, Justin Trudeau saying, hold my beer and doing his very best to, uh, to, put, um, to put those rules to shame. So now it's time for us to fix these broken, uh, these broken rules, the rules that have been broken, but obviously accountability in Ottawa is broken. And uh, that's why it's going to take a conservative government um, to, to return uh, good ethical governance and accountability to Ottawa. So what has Justin Trudeau done to, to clean up Ottawa? He campaigned on that in 2015 as this new shiny individual who is going to clean up Ottawa. He was going to take away power from the prime minister's office, give it back to his backbench MPs. Things are going to be different. The, the clouds are going to part. The sun is going to shine. The angels will start to sing. Life will be good. But yet the absolute opposite has happened. He's actually solidified power in the PMO. His backbench MPs barely have a say in anything. And the scandals keep on going. And, and thankfully, some of the rules, as you mentioned, put in place by Stephen Harper, caught and put some light on some of the, the uh, ethical violations that Trudeau and his gang are doing. But it, it hasn't stopped him. He's still doing it. Yeah, that's right. And, and we've seen over the last six years, the prime minister uh, investigated by the by the ethics commissioner three times, found guilty of breaking those ethics laws twice. Multiple members of of his uh, of his cabinet, including Bill Morneau, who who he fired in in disgrace. Uh, the uh, Dominic LeBlanc, the you know the current president of the Privy Council or of the um, of the Treasury Board. And so we have uh, we have this and to say nothing of the um, the code violations and and the cast of characters who now. Um, sit as independents who, who were first elected as, as liberals. Um, and, and then we have the actual disregard for parliament itself. And we've seen that with, you know, with the, uh, the findings by the speaker, you know, holding PHAC in contempt. We've seen the government again refuse to deliver documents. We, we see that you know, the, the prime minister wouldn't apologize for his role in, in the SNC-Lavalin scandal, where he attempted to use his political power to interfere in the criminal prosecution of his friends at SNC-Lavalin. He, he would make no apologies for that because he believes that there are two sets of rules. He believes that there's a set of rules for, for liberals and well-connected liberals, and then there's a set of rules for everybody else. And he's going to take care of that first set first. And okay. oh, it's, continue, uh, sorry. It's, it, it's been it, it's been a it's been a tough uh, it's been a tough six years I think for for Canadians to watch what's unfolded in Ottawa. All right, we have run way over time, but I do want to touch quickly on what happened yesterday. It was a uh, sadly historic moment in the House of Commons in the Canadian political system. There was a public office holder brought to the bar of the House of Commons, and you mentioned it a few times, and I want to quickly touch on that. What happened and why? Well, the um, the Conservatives put forward a motion. We put forward a motion last week. It had the support of uh, of the other opposition parties, and we um, ultimately we we found uh, the House found uh, the Public Health Agency of Canada in contempt of Parliament and summoned its head, uh, Ian Stewart, to appear at the bar of the House of Commons. As as you mentioned, Jamie, this hasn't happened uh, in over a hundred years where someone who who's not an MP to be uh, to be called like this to the House. And, you know, really, uh, the Liberals have used Mr. Stewart as a scapegoat. And the direction that he has been given, this isn't something that Mr. Stewart has arrived at decisions of his own volition. These are directions from the, the health minister, from the PMO. And, uh, and when, when Mr. Stewart arrived, um, and he did all that he could do as an individual, and that was to present himself and to receive on behalf of his agency um, the, the admonishment of, of the speaker. But he wasn't able to bring the documents, of course, because the Liberal government won't allow him to do so. So we have a government that's in, in breach of three orders of the House and its special committee. 
And these orders require the government to hand over documents in such a way that, that protects national security, but also gives Canadians a transparency and holds the government to account, which is the job of all MPs in Ottawa. And so it's, it's really uh, disheartening to see a government that, um, that set, set our you know, Canadians' uh, uh, hopes very high in 2015 on, on, uh, on what they said they would do versus what we're seeing now. And it's, uh, it's incredibly disappointing that these Liberals have refused these orders of the House and have continued a cover up of what you know is essentially a, a or possibly a national security breach on uh, on Justin Trudeau's watch. Well, Michael, I always give the guests the last minute, the last comment. Why don't you take that now, and we'll let you get off to question period because I believe you have a few questions, and the leaders up very shortly. So, take it away, Michael Barrett. Well, it's uh, it's incredibly important the. Um, you know, that, that folks share this message, certainly while we still can, you know, the before, you know, things like Bill C-10 take effect, uh, you want to talk to your friends, talk to your family about what's going on in Ottawa. This, this podcast, uh, Jamie and his team do a tremendous job in getting our, in getting our message out to, uh, to you. And you need to do your part for our uh, conservative movement in Canada and make sure that, that people hear this. You have conservative MPs who are working hard for you in Ottawa. And as we come up on, uh, on an election, uh, it's important to, to, support those, uh, to support those folks who are putting their name on the ticket and to, uh, to stand up for uh, conservatism across Canada and to take that message uh, to Ottawa. All right, Michael Barrett, Member of Parliament for Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands, and Rideau Lakes. He's also the Shadow Minister for Ethics. Sadly, a very busy individual. We appreciate his time. He's a good friend of the show. He's been on a few times, and we do appreciate him coming on yet again. And sadly, Michael, you're a great guy. You're awesome. You're good at your job. You're a great voice for your constituents. But for our country's sake, I'd like it if you didn't come on as much. Like <laughs> The reason I'm having you is because there's problems. So... I love you. You're awesome. But, you know, I'd be glad if we didn't have to do this. Anyways, this is great content. As Michael said, before BLC 10 stops this program, we need you to like, comment, subscribe, share it. Help us push back against the ever-moving liberal agenda. As Michael said, maybe there's someone in your social media network that would be open to hearing the conservative message, something they're not getting from the mainstream media. This is your chance to ensure that Aaron O'Toole becomes the next prime minister. New content every single Tuesday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. If you can't watch it all now, listen to it. Download it. Platforms like CastBox, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, you name it. It is out there. And as always, remember, less taxes, less government more freedom. That's the blueprint. Thanks for joining us.